Good afternoon. I'll call this meeting to order and take roll. Trustee Cound. Here. Trustee Mayo. Here. Trustee McFerrin. Here. Trustee Mason. Here. And I am here. Um, we have public comments. So Yeah, 90 seconds. Okay. Because we have we have about 12 speakers. Um, before we go into closed session, which we have to finish at six because then we have the regular, we're going to put it at we are going to open public comment and give each speaker a minute and a half. All right. Kip Pinovich. You haven't changed. I'm taking over. I'm so used to it. Yep. Uh, I put them on the table. All right. This is on this time, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, this time I'm bringing you some data that's a little more granular than last time. Last time I gave you kind of a, a bar graph kind of thing. A lot of numbers on here. So I'm going to hurry and display it. Double sided. On the one side, it has a short table. What I did was I took all our surrounding districts, compared their step and column in the, in the first column to ours. Anything that doesn't have parentheses means that person in that district at that spot is making that much more money than if they worked here. And at the bottom, I summed up steps one to 10. So over 10 years, for example, in Akalani's, you'd make $55,000 more than if you worked here. On the other side, I did exactly the same thing in the last column, and that's over all 25 steps. And then at the bottom, I summed up what the difference would be between year one and 10, one to 18, one to 25. Attract and retain, money wins. This is what you're competing against. And the part that makes this even more kind of damning I used our next year's salary schedule off this. So this is with an additional two and a half percent. This is not good if you wanna keep people here. I hope you'll do something about it. Thank you. I will get to the next public comment. Um, we're, we, our closed session agenda is 3.1 negotiations. The board may discuss negotiations to provide direction to its representatives regarding represented employees pursuant to government code section 54957.6. And then 3.2 is dismiss, discipline, dismissal, release, or reassignment of public employee government, sec, governor section, shoot, government section code 54957B1. And we have public comment. Laura John. Uh, I'm a nervous public speaker, so please excuse any stumbling of words that I'm certain I will do. Um, I'm Laura John. I'm the parent of a current Strandwood Elementary student and a future student. Um, I was informed today that the district may not be renewing Dr. Sherry Scripter as our principal at Strandwood next year. Um, this is upsetting news for me, uh, for my family, for, for all of Strandwood. Um, I can't say enough about the impact and the difference she's made for myself and my daughter. Um, she always thinks of the students first and makes the decisions and voices her opinions uh, based on what's best for the kids. She's called me personally when I've had concerns about my daughter. Um, she's she's out there subbing. She's doing yard duty. She's um, helping us fundraise. She's monitoring drop-offs and pickups. We've had people doing illegal U-turns in the crossbacks. Um, she's at ice cream socials, just you know, engaging with the kids. Um, she knows my daughter's name. Uh, that's that's not something that I've had at other school districts. Um, so I just wanted to to speak out and say that I really hope that her contract will be renewed. Thank you. Jennifer Nebo. I am also speaking out on the behalf of Dr. Scripter. Um, I just want to know by a show of hands, how many of you have actually taught in a classroom before? Two, two on the board. And how many of you have ever taught during a pandemic? How many have taught after the pandemic? One. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. 
So um, one thing I do want to reiterate is that we are coming out of a pandemic and I have seen firsthand how this has affected children all across the board. There are behavioral problems, behavioral issues that have come out and these teachers have no help. I am in my son's classroom every Tuesday, sometimes every Thursday, and I'm in there to help because there is a sea of children. There are 32 children in a classroom and it is pretty much almost impossible to teach when you have 20 different personalities. It is not a lack of classroom management. It is purely a lack that there is no help, that we have no aids, we have no help. Also, Dr. Scripter has been an amazing advocate for our school and my uh, children both really love Dr. Scripter. When I told my six-year-old daughter today that Dr. Scripter may not be coming back next year, she was in tears. The kids have been through enough. If you have not been to Strandwood, I urge you to come to Strandwood, see the community, see the staff, and you will definitely re rethink your decision about renewing her contract next year because she is definitely a necessity at Strandwood. Marissa Shannon. Hi, thank you. Um, I also have two children at Strandwood Elementary, a kindergartner and a third grader. Um, I come here as a very concerned parent. I'm also a licensed uh, mental health therapist and I've worked with Dr. Scripter for many years closely. Um, I really value her as a leader for our school, as a concerned um, just person that's around and bring so much to our community. Like Jennifer was just saying, my kids adore Dr. Scripter. Um, she's there when we walk to school every morning. She's there after school with my son, teaching him how to sort garbage because he's having some behavioral issues in the classroom and she's taking the time to give him additional attention as a reward um, for meeting his goals for the day. I've been on site council with her. I've attended PTA meetings with her. I've talked to her about some issues with my daughter during the pandemic that was really hard. I value that she cares about families. She cares about our community. She cares about the kids' mental health as well as their education. And I'm quite concerned what would happen if she were to leave and what would we get next? You know, our kids have had so much change over the last few years and she brings this community together. She pulls parents in to volunteer, to fundraise, to support one another. And I'm not sure we'll have that with another principal. And I'm not sure what next year or the next few years will look like for Strandwood. I think Strandwood has a strong history of parent involvement and that is held together under her leadership. Thank, Thank you. you. Nicole Lee. Hi, um, I'm up here also because I heard the news um, of our beloved principal not returning to Strandwood next year. Um, I'm just hoping you guys will all reconsider. She is amazing. Um, she's one of the most responsive principals that I've ever worked with. She always fights for our kids and what they need, whether she's subbing for a teacher, doing lunch yard duty, or making sure the kids get in the correct car at pickup. Um, I'm in the classroom two times a week with my, once with my son and once with my daughter, and the kids need help. There's 32 kids in my son's second grade class, and all of them need help. They all need reading help, they need math help. She's in there doing reading groups with the kids because she knows that that's what they need. She's vital to our Strandwood community and you guys can't let her go. I don't know what's gonna come next if you do. She's, I'm on campus every single day. She's there, she's everywhere. The kids love her, the parents love her, the teachers do not want her to leave. And I just think it's terrible that this, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs in whatever you guys are dealing with behind the scenes, but the kids come first. The kids come first. And that's all you guys should know. And that's what you guys should be thinking of. I mean, after the COVID lockdowns, that was terrible. Our kids deserve better than this. And Sherry needs to stay. So I really hope you guys will Thank consider you. and listen to us. Thank you. Don, I think it says Don Nikolai.
Hi, my understanding is this is a, a termination, not a transfer. Is that correct? We haven't been you can't in answer. closed session. You could if you wanted to though, right? You could if you wanted to. In public, to. so the one thing I should- um, yeah. Show I some should, courage, show some example. Oh, oh, the one thing I should um, should explain about public comment is that we aren't allowed to respond, but especially in this case, because it's closed session. And honestly, the only reason we know what's coming in closed session is because you emailed us. So, so you didn't know, you didn't know about this termination before you showed up here today. Our job is to, um, is deliberate correct? in closed session. And that's when we learn. So you just about, told me that you didn't know anything about this until you showed up today. How do you terminate somebody? If you guys don't talk about it, we talk about it in closed oh, session. You just said you didn't. No, I said, we, we talk about it in closed session, which will come in just a few minutes as soon okay. as we're done. So you have about a minute left. Okay. I, and I suppose you want to answer the question of why you're terminating her. And it sounds like from the first speaker that you have a hard time keeping employees. You have a fantastic one and you want to get rid of her. It, it just makes no sense at all. At all. Um, And this late notice, I mean, you see how many people showed up here in a couple hours notice. They're, they're, this room would be packed if people knew about it. Um, I, I don't know, you're not, you don't have someone better to put in that position, I guarantee you that. So. I can't read the last name, but the first name is Lydia. Thanks so much for hearing us. Um, my name is Lydia Galley. I'm an MDUSD parent. Um, I am an MDUSD substitute teacher, a substitute noon supervisor. I'm on the Strandwood PTA as the vice president. Um, I'm also on the City of Pleasant Hill Education Commission and I sit on the site council. My husband is a, a first responder and a veteran. So to say that we are not dedicated to community service would be an understatement. And all of those things I see in Sherry. The first time that I met her four years ago, she exuded all of these qualities and has become a mentor to me and my kids. And she's an outstanding educator. The teachers, if you talk to any of the teachers, the students, same story when I told my eight-year-old that why I had to come to this meeting, she burst into tears and said she loves Dr. Scripter. Why would she have to go? I don't know. I told her I'm going to find out. But apparently I'm not going to find out. <laughs> um, I appreciate that you guys are here to listen to us. I have had meetings with Sharice and I appreciate her coming out and um, being a hands-on advocate board member for the students. I haven't seen the same in some of our other representatives where we are in Pleasant Hill, Linda Mayo, you are our representative. I understand I've heard from numerous parents um, that we have tried to reach out to you and received no response to our emails. So I would like to invite you here now that I'm here with you to our next um, City of Pleasant Hill Education Commission meeting. And I'm happy to send you the dates and the times and the address. We are now meeting in person. We used to only do Zoom meetings, but I think it would be very, very beneficial for you to show up and come and Thank speak you. to um, your the district area parents, because this is one issue. The next person that, is Laura Burns. This Thank is you. one issue that we've been upset about, but there are numerous, and this feels personal right now with this. Thank you. Laurel, sorry. I think I misread it. Good evening, Dr. Clark and board members. My name is Laurel Burns, and I'm here tonight to support Dr. Sherry Scripter. I've been a teacher at Strandwood for 25 years. I'm also the Medea representative for our site. When I heard that Dr. Scripter, Scripter was to be let go, my reaction was one of shock and disappointment. Dr. Scripter's administrative style brings a calmness to our school and students know and understand our rules and routines. And as a result, our campus route runs very smoothly. Overall, students, staff, staff members, and parents at Strandwood are very happy. Dr. Scripter supports all of her staff members. She speaks directly to teachers when there's an issue or a problem on campus. She's honest in her approach with the community as a whole. And I personally feel very safe and valued at this school. When it comes to union matters, she's fair and she respects the contract that exists between Medea and MDUSD. I implore you to rethink your decision regarding Dr. Scripter tonight and her future at Strandwood. 
please don't release a principal who is doing a great job and who is liked and respected by those at her site. Do not let go of this valuable employee. Thanks for your time. Heidi Beck. Hello, Dr. Clark and members of the board. My name is Heidi Beck. I've been around here for a long time. I went to um, schools in our school district. I started in 1981 when I was in elementary school at Mountain View, El Dorado, Concord High. I did student teaching at Woodside and Moran Avenue. I did substitute teaching in almost every location in this district, and I've been at Strandwood now for 18 years. I have seen a lot of ins and outs. I've seen a lot of principals. I've worked with principals in a number of different fashions and forms. I have two children of my own. They've been in MDUSD schools now for a com combination of 12 years. Um, we are the people who know Dr. Scripter best. Standing behind me, we have employees, we have PTA members, we have uh, parents of kids. My children are going or have been to um, Strandwood at, uh, students and we're here in like many different faces and forms we know her best she comes to my classroom she's asking you know what do we need if I have a student discipline um, issue she's the one she will handle it she's supportive with parents she's supportive with teachers she's I, I, I just can't I can't I don't have time to explain to you but I think I'm hoping that you're going to see by the people in this room how much respect that we give her and how valued she makes us feel. And I don't want to see another principal open position up in our district. There's too many. Let us keep one we want. Let us keep one that values us and respects. Thank you. Jennifer Williams. Hi there. Um, I am a parent of a second grader. Um, I'm on the PTA for the outreach position, getting more parents um, and everyone involved. Um, I am a new sub in the district. I'm hopefully gonna accept my first assignment soon um, and a very concerned parent um, that is here today to speak on behalf of Dr. Sherry Scripter. Um, it's been a really rough couple of years in public school, as you all know. You, you know, you were, most of you were, you know, went through it. Um, we finally have some continuity now. Um, Sherry is a big part of that at our school. To upend that would be a grave error on the part of the district and the board. Um, it does not represent what the parents at the school want. Um, I haven't seen anyone here at our school. So you don't know what's going on at our school. You don't know that that would be the positive, um, the positive tone that Sherry has set for us. At the PTA meeting just last week, she proposed that we use some of our funds um, that we haven't used yet to hire two additional counselors to address the mental health needs of the students at our school. Only someone who um, is really concerned about the students would do that. And she did that. We approved it. So we're going to have now a total of three school counselors. I think that speaks very highly to how she cares for the students. She's responsive. She's responsive to the, um, the parent community. She's visible. If my daughter was up here, she would say, we love her. Why are they getting rid of her? That's what she said. Um, and I think the Thank entire you. student body, if you if you read the public con comments, I it Thank will you make so much. you weep. Thank, Thank you. you. Dina Zepegno. Good evening, Dr. Clark and the board. Thank you for letting me address you. I have been an employee of yours for 19 years. It has not been easy to stay an employee. I went through all of the crazy layoffs in 2007 and 2008. I've been at six schools because of it. Um, my own children went to Strandwood and I ended up there um, the year before Sherry came and she has been, well, we all loved Mrs. Kim. She was a treasure. Sherry has united our staff. She has united our school. She knows every child's name. She's in and out of our classrooms all day, every day. She's out there putting kids in cars. She's out there at lunch with them. She has always 
has everyone's best interest at heart. Losing someone like this at our school would be devastating. She is the rock of our school. She is funny. Even her corny jokes have grown on us. <laughs> she, um, there's not a better administrator out there. And I've been through six schools with all my bumping around and layoffs. And I can tell you, she is steady and kind and fair. And the kids love her. Please don't take her away from us. Thank you. We'll adjourn to closed session.